In this video, we are going to study on how to determine the different forces and, of course, the net force of the free body diagram. So, in the illustration, we have here the body, which is equal to 15 kilograms. So, if we're going to look at that illustration, this body or this object is being applied with a 550 newton force going upward in a ramp, which is 57 degrees um, from the ground. Now, the question is, how much is the gravitational force exerted by this object? Also, how much will be the normal force, the friction force, and the net force of the whole um, free body diagram or of the whole forces acting on the body? Now, to look first for the Fg, which is the first unknown, let us use our equation F sub G is equal to mg. So F sub G is equal to mg. Okay, so we have here the mass, which is 15 kilograms. That will be multiplied by the gravitational acceleration, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So we are going to use the negative sign because of the direction of the force, which is, of course, going downward. And the gravitational acceleration is always going downward. So 15 times negative 9.8 is equal to negative 147 kilograms meters per second squared or equal to negative 147 newtons. So there it is. Next. Let us solve for the F sub N. The question is, how are we going to solve for the F sub N? So in solving for the F sub N, we have to look first for the force of gravity perpendicular to the surface. Now, if this is the F sub N, this is where the force of gravity perpendicular to the surface. Okay. Take note, this is like um, the application in vectors. Um, anyway, in getting the F sub N, the length of the force here or the arrow here is also the same as the force perpendicular to the surface. And always remember that F sub N or the normal force must be always perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so if this is the surface, this is where the normal force will be located. So in order to get this, we have to look for this first. Okay, now what is this um, force of gravity perpendicular to the surface? This is the y component of our force of gravity. Why? Because if we're going to look at here, we can make a triangle here. By the way, what is this line will tell us? This broken line or this horizontal line is the force of gravity parallel to the surface. Now, if we're going to plot it here, where is it located? So, here it is. So, this is the force of gravity parallel to the surface. So, this force is parallel to the surface and this length is the same as here. So, this is like um, we are applying the parallelogram method for vectors. Okay, now always remember that the F parallel 
is the x component of our force of gravity. The f perpendicular is the y component of our force of gravity. Now, since we're going to look for the f sub n or the normal force, we have to determine the force of gravity perpendicular to the surface. And knowing that it is the y component of the f sub g or the gravitational force, then what are we going to do? We will be using the sine function to get the value. So we have f perpendicular is equal to f sub g sine theta. So the question is, how much angle are we going to use? If this is 57 degrees, this is also 57 degrees. So what, we're, we, what we are going to do here is to just simply plug in the values in the equation. So we have negative 147 sine 57 degrees. And that is equal to One hundred twenty three point twenty eight. So this is negative one hundred twenty three point twenty eight newtons. Now, why is it negative? Because it is going downwards. So take note that F parallel is equal to F sub n. So if the f parallel is 123.28 newtons, then the normal force will be equal to 123.28 newtons. Okay, why is it positive? Is it, it is positive because if you're going to look at here, the direction of the normal force, it is going upward. For the F perpendicular, it is going downward. That is why it is negative. But if we're going to look at the value, they are just the same. Okay. Now that we are done with the F sub N, let us go here to the friction force. In getting the friction force, we have the equation N times the mu. This mu is the coefficient of friction, and it has a value of 0 0.68. Now, since we already have here the normal force, which is represented by, by the big letter N in the equation, so all we have to do is to just simply multiply the normal force by the mu to get the value of the friction force. So we have here 123.28 newtons times 0 0.68 okay so we have here 83.83 newtons for the friction force. So lastly, we are going to solve for the net force. How are we going to solve for the net force? Okay. In solving for the net force, let us look first for the values in the x and the y component. And after that, we can get our net force. Okay. By the way, let me write here the friction force in our illustration or in our diagram. So if this is the applied force, of course, the friction force will be on the opposite side. Because this is the opposing force for our applied force. Okay. 
Okay, so here it is. Now to get our net force, what we're going to do here is we are going to get the x components and the y component. Let us go first to the x components. Let me write here summation of f sub x. For the summation of f sub x, all the values in the x component must be calculated. So we have here the f sub a and the f sub f. But then we don't know yet the value of the f parallel to the surface. So we have to get this value. And then after getting this value, we are going to add the three values. We are going to get their summation and the sum, of course, that will be our um, x component. So let us get first the f parallel to the surface. So f parallel is equal to f sub g cosine theta. So we have negative 147 cosine 57. And that's equal to 85.81. Oh, 51 rather. 85.51 newtons. So, there it is. Now that we got the F parallel, we can now solve for our X component. So, let us add the three values. We have the F sub F. plus F parallel plus the applied force. And that's equal to, let us have here the negative sign for the F sub F or the friction force because it is going to the west. Okay, by the way, how am I going to determine that I'm doing correct, correctly? So, if you're going to tilt this one, this is our Cartesian plane. Okay, so this is going to the west. And at the same uh, time, F parallel also is go, um, directed to the west or to the left. So they are both negative. Oh, by the way, let me give you some corrections here. It should be 80.06. I'm so sorry, I have some errors in my calculator this is 80.06 negative okay now let us solve for the summation of x so negative 83.83 newtons plus negative 80.06 plus 550 newtons and that's equal to 85.81 That's 386.11. Okay. Now let us go here to our um, Y component. Take note that the F parallel and the F sub N both um, have the same value. So for the summation of y, let me write it here on this side because we don't have the enough space already. So let me just write here above. Summation of f sub y. We have here the f sub n plus the f perpendicular. So this, that's equal to 
1.28 newtons minus 123.28 newtons. So this is equal to 0. Okay, so because of that, we are going to cancel these values. So to get our F net, since the values on the Y component are already eliminated, the F net will be this one. And this is equal to 386.11 newtons. And there it is. Take note, there's no need for you to do the Pythagorean theorem because your Y component is already eliminated. What's left here are the values and the X component only. So um, whatever values left in the X component, that will be um, the values that we are going to calculate and their sum will be automatically the net force. So that's all for this. Um, calculations in the free body diagram.